In lesson four, we're going to go through what is probably the most important lesson in the entire course. It's the foundation of how you record all transactions in accounting, and it's debit and credit theory. So what you're seeing in front of you, you can get by just going down to our lesson activities, or our syllabus, sorry, right here, lesson four, right beside it, you'll see get the web page version. And that's gonna be true for most of the remaining um, regular lessons, because I originally did them in sort of a flash web page um, design so that people students can go through them forwards and backwards and sort of it would animate the transactions and the re and the record keeping and the production of statements and stuff so you could sort of see what was going on so if you want to follow along with that go right ahead it's going to be the same as the video but there'll be more elaboration because you know i'm going to blab and stuff so um without further ado let's check this out oh the other thing is i'm only going to go through this part this is lesson four and this is a subsequent lesson. This is uh, actually five and then et cetera, et cetera. So let's just start. So you can click that or you can um, click the green button to go forwards or you can click the red button to go backwards, et cetera, et cetera. Pretty straightforward, right? Uh, I'm not gonna read everything that's on it because you can read it yourself. But essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about how what we've just learned to do with transaction analysis is actually done with debits and credits. So. Here's where students will make their first mistake among many with debits and credits. They'll get confused and they'll start to make some word associations with meaning that are false. So debits and credits mean only two things. Debit means left and credit means right. That's what they mean and that is all they mean. Some people are going to try to tell you that debit means things go up and debit means it goes only with assets or debits are good and credits are bad. It's all wrong. Debit means left side and credit means right side. That's all they mean. Don't forget it. So next slide. Let's recall up here. We got assets equals liabilities and equity, right? That's the fundamental accounting equation. So... What we're going to do to this is learn how we change, again, how we change these uh, account values, these things in the equation with transactions, except we're going to add in debits and credits to do it. Now, on the left, we got debits, right? Because that's what it means. And on the right, we got credits. So remember that. Now, in this flash file, anything you hover over and you get this little red ball means there's more info. Click it to get it. And what we're going to get if we click it is basically a, a simple definition common sense definition of debits and credits on the other side. They're just basically the opposite. So in general, if you just remember that in general, an account that appears on the left or debit side of the equation will have debit balances, is increased by another left or debit entry, and is decreased by the opposite, a right entry. Got that? It'll be a lot clearer when we, when we go through this. So here's the normal balance that sits in an account that's on the left or right side, how we would increase an account on that left or right side, and how you would decrease it. So it's pretty, you'll see the pattern pretty quick. So assets that are on the left or the debit side of the accounting equation have a balance that is normally debit balance. It's got a debit balance in the account. And to increase it, well, as this... <laughs> As the text says, if you have a desk and there's a pile of rocks on it, how do you get more rocks? You add more rocks, right? Well, if there's rocks, in this case, debits in an account like cash, and you want to make cash go up, well, you add more debits, right? So to increase an account on the left, you add, you debit it. Same thing. And obviously, I'm sure you could probably figure this out, to make it go the opposite direction, you make an opposite entry. You credit it. Likewise, on the right side, accounts have a right or credit balance normally, and you increase them with a right or credit entry, same side, right? Same type of entry. And to decrease them, you do the opposite. And it's the same for anything on the right side of the equation. And you can clearly see what the pattern is. So then let's look at an example. How do you actually use debits and credits? So for starters, we need to look at a couple other things, right? How do we use these transactions? Well, there's a whole bunch of things we're gonna look at. I'm gonna bring them all up on screen right now. Here we go. So we have debits, we've looked at those. I won't call them up again, but you can if you want to, right? Here's Bolton's law, it's not really my law, but that's what I call it. So 
that it should sound familiar from when we did transaction analysis just last lesson right and that is one only financial tra transactions are recorded two at least two accounts have to be affected and three has changed although it means the same thing as it did before before we said um the transaction has to balance the equation right well that's the same as saying that the total of all debits and you might have more than one but the total of all your debits has to be equal to the total of all your credits. That's the same thing as saying it has to balance. All right. So there's a few things here we need to go over before we start this process. Just so we know what's going on, here's the accounting cycle. We are now learning to actually start recording transactions. We're close. We're close to the actual first step, which is recording transactions in something that's very much like a diary of transactions. It's called the journal, the general journal. What we're going to start to do, though, um, is post directly to accounts that we call T accounts, which I'll show you in two seconds. And once we're done that, we tally up the value in all of those accounts, produce a trial balance to check that we did everything properly. That's the goal. And a T account is simply, well, it looks like a letter T. And every account has a T account. It's actually more formal than this. We'll learn it in a couple of weeks. But this is, this is for learning purposes. Basically, every instructor that teaches accounting uses a T account for this purpose, right? To post, it's called, from this step in the cycle. To post transactions to these accounts to accumulate value and to come up with totals. And debits, of course, go on the left and credits go on the right. And this seems like it's different, but it's actually mathematically the same as what you were doing when you were doing transaction analysis. Take a look. So and when we had all these cash transactions, when we went through the exercise, so lesson three, I illustrated this activity. And cash had some things that made it go up and some things that made it go down. And this transaction analysis sheet is no different mathematically than this T account for cash. All we've done is separate out these things that make cash go up, so the positive numbers, and we put them on the debit side. And all these things for that make cash go down, the negative numbers, go on the credit side. That's really all it is. It's mathematically the same process, so don't panic. Then, if you recall from the accounting cycle, again, once we've done that and accumulated value in those accounts, we then make a trial balance to make sure we've done it properly. Now, trial balance is, is not a formal statement. It's not shown to the public. You should know that right in advance. And then once we've balanced, those values on the trial balance are used to make your statements, the income statement and the balance sheet. Um, so what does a trial balance look like? Well, essentially, it, it's ordered. You list all of your accounts because you're balancing the equation. You have to list everything. You got two columns. Don't worry about this one with account numbers in it right now. We'll, we'll talk about those later. Um, you're going to have a debit and a credit side. So accounts that have debit balances, you'll list their balances here. Accounts that have credit balances, you'll list them here. Total them up. And because it's equation, the left side or debit side of the equation has to equal the right side or the credit side. They have to be the same. And that's it. If they are, you've probably done everything correctly. It is possible you haven't. If you make a mistake that still balances the equation, it won't show up on a trial balance, though. The last thing you have to keep in mind is this chart of accounts, because when you're ordering your accounts on the trial balance, as well as the balance sheet, you have to use this method. In fact, at any time in accounting, forever for all eternity, if you have to order something, this is the method you're using to order. So let's quickly go through an example of transactions. Here we go. So we had assets equals liabilities and equity, right? So we're going to make T accounts for every single account, no sharing, right? And if you've got something, a new transaction that it just won't fit into an existing account, you've got to make a new T account. So over here, we're going to have our transactions. The first one is the owner, we'll say it's me, begins a consulting business by investing $10,000. Normally, we do debits first. So the steps to this process are, one, is it actually a transaction? And then you got to ask yourself, what do I have more of? What do I have less of? And once you've figured that out, then you got to ask yourself, okay, if I'm deciding cash is going up, what makes cash go up? And remember, when you're done, at least two accounts have to have been affected, and the total of all debits has to equal the total of all credits. That means it has to balance, right? That hasn't changed. So I invest $10,000 in my business. What happens first? Well, what do I have more of? What do I have less? Well, I should say, what does my business have more of? And what does my business have less of? Well, I have more cash, right? 
what side of the accounting equation is cash on? Well, it's on the left. So if it's on the left, remember, if it's on the left, it has a left side or debit balance, and it's an increased by a left or debit entry. Same entry to make it go up if it's on the left. So I've got more cash, so I'm gonna debit cash, and the first thing you should do is put the date. I was given numbers, so I'm gonna use the numbers, but if you've given dates, put dates. And don't put more than one item on a line, whether it's debit or credit. Don't double it up or you will go crazy trying to find your mistakes. One item per row in your T account, okay? So that's a debit of $10,000. Cash is on the left, it went up, so we make a left entry, right? Left side of the accounting equation. Next, we need another account to be affected. What's affected? Well, I just put that value into my business, so equity went up. Equity is on the right side of the accounting equation, which means it's increased by the same side entry, a credit entry. So we credit equity $10,000. Debits equal credits, we're done. Next, the owner purchases office equipment for $3,000 cash. Okay, well, what do we have more of? What do we have less of? Well, we have more equipment. Equipment's on the left side, it's an asset, so we would debit equipment $3,000. So what do we have less or more of to balance this? Well, we spent cash on it. Cash is on the left side of the accounting equation. But on the left side, to make it go down, because we're spending cash, right? So cash has to go down. So we make the opposite side entry. Cash is on the left, so we credit cash to make it go down. Notice I didn't put it beside the 10,000, I put it on the next row. Okay, third transaction. Owner performs services for a client for $5,000 cash. Okay, cash goes up, cash is on the left, so we debit cash, $5,000. That is the definition of revenue. We performed a service, we've earned money, we've been paid the money even, so equity goes up. Equity's on the right side. So to make a right side account go up, you make a right side or credit entry. Next transaction. Number four, we purchased a business car for $4,000 paid for with a bank loan. Okay, so we have more cars and more loans. So a car or an auto, this auto account, is on the left side of the equation. So left or debit entry makes it go up. The credit, well, this is on the right side. It's going up. So that's a credit entry to make the, this right side or credit side account go up. Debits equal credits. Done. Last transaction. Paid rent for the month, $500 cash. Well, that's a type of an expense. So expenses, lower equity. Equity is on the right, so we debit equity $500. Uh, normally you do your debits first. That's sort of, if you've noticed, that's kind of what I've been doing just by default. But that's kind of what we do. It's a little hard right now, but eventually once we get to the actual journalizing step, you should be doing your debits, all your debits before you do any credits. Uh, right now it's kind of hard, but eventually that should be what you're doing. Next, if we debited 500, there must be a credit 500 somewhere. And remember, you can have more than two accounts. In this example, I'm just doing two for per transaction, but you could have more than two. So we got to credit something. We paid it with cash. Cash is on the left side of the accounting equation. So to make it go down, you make a right side entry and there's our credits. We're done. That's posting finished. And now we have to make something like this, a trial balance. So before we do that, we have to total all of our accounts where, we, where we've accumulated value. And that's the purpose of posting, to get that value. And what you do is you would total both sides, and you can do this in your head or on a calculator or in your spreadsheet, and you find the difference between the two sides, and you put that difference on the side with the larger number. Obviously, because if you had 10, took out three, added five more, took out 500, you'll be left with positive cash. And cash, it has a debit balance, so it should be on the left or debit side, right? Which is the side with the larger number. So this minus this is 11,500, and you put it on the left side. Likewise, with all the other accounts, right? The only ones you actually have to total will be equity and cash. But here we got 500 debit, 15,000 credit, so that's $14,500 in credits. So now you have totaled all your accounts, and you're ready for the trial balance. There's a simple trial balance. Two columns, one for debits, one for credits. List your accounts here in the order of the chart of accounts. This thing. Titles are similar. You put the company, you put what it is, 
right? A trial balance, and then you put the date of the trial balance. Then you list your accounts in order and you put the values in the appropriate column, right? So cash, then office equipment, then a vehicle, then your bank loan, then your equity, and you total up both sides. And if you did it properly and all your transactions balanced and you started balanced, then you will end balance and your debits, in this case, 18,500, will equal your credits of 18,500. And that's posting. Piece of cake, right?